Welcome back to Nightmind, friends. I do hope you've been enjoying our journeys lately revisiting some old topics to engage in full dive explorations. I have another for you this evening. A long, dark tale that recently stirred from its slumber. For those of you who are familiar with The Sun Vanished, this should be an exciting continuation. And for those who aren't, allow me to introduce one of the most engaging and viral Twitter unfiction projects ever produced. The sun vanished arrived as suddenly as the event it opens with. Just a series of tweets on April 30th, 2018, born of one man's dire need to gain a sense of control in an unprecedented emergency. Help. It's late in the morning and still dark outside. I can hear the tornado sirens in the next county over, but the weather radar is clear. Where is the sun? Panic is taking hold on the nation in response to the sudden disappearance of the sun, with violent riots taking place in just about every major city. We are receiving an influx of reports of ransacking and looting from New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Dallas, and Washington, D.C., with hundreds more isolated incidents coming in hourly. The president made a public statement this morning urging people to remain calm and stay in their homes. Meanwhile, experts are claiming this phenomenon to be an event similar to New England's dark day in 1780, and that things will return next year. The account holder, who will call TSV, said the power kept going out and he was hearing noises. Gunshots are heard by May 1st. The newsfeed stopped coming in and the TV signal quit entirely shortly after. TSV asked the few followers he has at this point if he should go outside. The vote is an overwhelming yes. He reports, I went outside. I saw something out there I can't really explain, but I can show you. TSV tells us he looked for stars or planets, but the sky was pitch black. All he could see was the red light flashing in the woods. May 2nd marks day 3. Still no sign of daylight. It is getting colder. A person just ran by in my street. Two of the same flashing lights I saw yesterday were following him. They were gone by the time I got my phone out to record. On May 3rd, a new message comes, accompanied by video. Something just flew over my house. I couldn't see it, too dark outside, but a wave of heat just came over me. Feels like the temperature increased by like 10 or 15 degrees. TSV manages to reach out to someone he knows at last and gets a response. It's his friend, Danyan, asking if he's alive. TSV responds and says that he's at home. Danyan is a two days drive away, but says he'll head over. After this, TSV reports in again. Now we have another problem. This guy has been standing completely still with his back towards me. I have no idea how long he's been standing there. TSV sends Danny the photo of the man outside. His reply is immediate. Get away from the window. Keep all lights off. Do not talk to them or let them in. And if you see any flashing lights, hide. TSV looks out the window again. Whoever was standing outside is gone now. TSV stays hidden in the house for two days, letting followers know he'll be okay if things come to a fight, and again, asking if anyone knows anything or can help at all. Emergency lines aren't responding, and there's no getting to the radio. On May 5th, a direct message is received by a follower in British Columbia, telling him to never look into the red light. This is followed by a message from Danian. So, I have good news and bad news. Good news is, I'm closer to you now. Bad news is, I'm out of fuel. There are no active gas stations anywhere close to me. All of the power is down, and all of the gas stations nearby are electric gas pumps. How far away are you? Probably still eight or nine hours away. Facing a difficult choice, TSV turns to the audience to ask what he should do. The majority votes by a slim margin to stay home. 
We find out shortly after this was probably the right call, as TSV writes, Someone is screaming outside. TSV is no longer sure about leaving. He asks Danyan how he's able to avoid detection, to which Danyan replies, I'm just staying in the car. It's locked and off at the moment. After I catch a few winks, I'm going to try to take a look around. The only other note from that day was how quiet it became, and how the house warmed up after that thing flew over it. The next day, TSV reports, I'm really surprised the power has stayed on for this long. Only a few outages here and there, but I'm still extremely paranoid that it will go out permanently any time now. I can see a faint light outside my bedroom window, going downstairs to check it out. TSV survives this encounter and receives a message from Danyan asking what street they lived on when they were kids. TSV is confused, but does answer the question. I was looking around and just found this, Danyan says, sharing a photo of graffiti that reads, Beware of headlights. TSV shares a moment of vulnerability with us next. Sometimes I feel like I have a good handle on this whole situation and am thinking rationally and logically, but other times I feel like bawling. Day 9 Sorry about that tweet last night. What happened at the window got to me a bit. Anyway, I'm currently in touch with a couple of people with some experience and some info on what's going on. Details soon. Screenshots are provided of direct messages from a man named Tucker living in Virginia. He had been working the night shift and was about to clock out when he realized the sun hadn't risen. He was heading out of town after riots broke out when he came across a man named Flynn who described things that hunt people down. At first, he didn't believe Flynn but crowds and traffic on the highway began dissipating until they were empty. Tucker and Flynn traveled together, finding places to hide and supplies, but a few days ago, he started losing his mind, talking nonsense and going on in that way nonstop. But one day it all stopped and he wouldn't speak, Tucker says. He just stood like a statue for probably a full 12 hours. Then he attacked me out of nowhere. I tried and tried to keep him away, but he just wouldn't stop. I had to stop him. There was nothing else I could do. Tucker's been living on his own for a few days now, but finally caught a signal to get online. TSV thanks him for his story and promises to share it with his followers. Later, a message from TSV. I'm hearing noises outside again. Seven hours later, TSV says, It's finally gone. I think I'm safe now. I have no idea how, but the front door is unlocked and wide open. The alarm never came on either. I guess it got reset during one of the blackouts. Some good news for once. Danyan is back. Before you all ask, he seems to be in his right mind. I need to get serious about securing my house. We receive photos of simple security measures. Cups stacked outside a door and hanging cans. TSV is experiencing temperature drops and is running low on supplies, but Danyan reports in, claiming to have found a source of gasoline, a spot of hope in the darkness. TSV needs it, as we soon find out. Over the course of the last week, I've been increasingly paranoid about someone or something coming into my house while I'm sleeping, and I don't think it's one of those lights. It feels different. I can't explain it, but I can sense it. And last night, after I put cans on door handles, I've been waking up to clanging sounds, but I'm not certain if it's real or just my imagination. He places flower in front of a door. If it ends up disturbed at some point, he'll know for sure. Meanwhile, TSV receives a picture from the contact in British Columbia, showing a being inside their house without a headlight. He later says, I had a nightmare about that picture. Just woke up to more screaming outside. I keep trying to record the screaming when I hear it, but the microphone isn't picking it up. I think the screaming is coming from the neighbor's house. Making matters worse is the screenshot of a check-in with Danyan, who responded far too strangely to a security question asking what year they graduated high school. TSV doesn't want to accept it, but his friend may have been compromised. Screaming outside continues, and Danyan checks in, saying he's a couple hours away and wants to know the address of the house. TSV asks followers if he should trust Danyan. The vote is overwhelmingly against, and TSV tries to get the security answer one more time. 
Danyan claims they don't have time for this, and it creates a mutual distrust. The only personal contact he has we had has now been severed, and after managing to get some sleep, he wakes up to a mess of flour in front of the door. It's time to run. His first stop is a neighbor's house, where he heard screaming. There's no one here now, but there is fresh food and water. Former survivors also left a note listing what they know about the enemy. And despite their current distrust, Danyan sends a message, telling TSV to stay low and get out of sight, if he's still himself. The following day, whatever flew over the first house returns, and it stays in position. This thing is making sounds I've never heard before. The vibrations are shaking the house. TSV locks himself in the bathroom, where there's no window, and tries to sleep. He wakes up to a blue light spilling under the door. I just heard yelling, but this time it sounded like the person was in agony. It's just quiet now. The blue light is still here. When it finally disappears, the audience is given a choice. Leave the bathroom, or stay a bit longer. The choice to leave prevails, and TSV says he's trying his best to stay calm as he types, but he thinks he saw a body in the middle of the street. Several developments occur while TSV camps out. He discovers a diary from a survivor who got careless and looked into the red light. They reported feeling empty inside and claimed that the sun came back. The contact from Virginia, Tucker, reports in, informing followers that he's alive and tells TSV to avoid the blue light. He witnessed someone running away, and when the blue light shined on them, well, it wasn't pretty. The body in the street disappears, and the water from the house TSV hides in turns dark. He's got enough clean water saved up to avoid drinking the contaminated water, though. Days later, we receive this. Guys, someone is at the window. They are in the house now. They're looking for me. Been hiding for 20 hours. I think they're gone. I need to check the house first. The majority votes to go upstairs. TSV finds blood on a wall, and then catches a picture of the intruder before escaping. He locks her in the room she stands in, then goes to hide and tries to sleep. When he wakes up, the door is busted open. After the car horn, I heard a gunshot. Then, Danyan says hello. I found your Twitter. Is that you honking outside? And the gunshot? Yep. So we have the same problem as we had before. Can I trust you? At your 11th birthday party, I gave you a Batman Lego set. Is that good enough? Grab your stuff. Let's go. Weeks pass without word from TSV. When he does come back, he explains that Danyan drove them far out into the woods, where they set up a camp. They weren't in the range of cell towers for a while, so checking in wasn't possible. Danyan isn't a fan of TSV broadcasting their situation to the internet, but TSV argues that they have a chance to reach people who might be in the same situation. When a storm rolled in, they caught sight of this. On July 12th, Danyan takes the car to go find more fuel, but the next day, he's still gone. Days go by without his return, and a new flickering enemy approaches the tent. TSV asks the audience what to do, and they instruct him to leave. He follows the new enemy to a field of crops, which were six to seven feet high. The entity was taller. TSV goes silent and does not return for two and a half months. When he does, he says, I don't have much time, extremely low battery, but there's a car close by, I can see it. From what I can tell, the car door is open and dinging, meaning the keys are still in the ignition. Oh god, it's warm here. This is a hot spot, but it's my one ticket to getting my phone charged and getting away from here. Alright, I'm not in a cold spot yet, but where I am will do for now. The ships have certain identifiable flight patterns. You can tell where they tread often by the temperature of the area, hot spots. Where they don't go as often is much more safe, cold spots. After I powered off my phone to save the last little bit of battery juice, some followers of the Twitter account figured out where I was and came to rescue me. They brought me to their shelter and had food and clean water, so I decided to live with them for about two months. 
Then I think the flight patterns changed and we got found out. And they didn't make it. That's why I've had to learn how to evade the ships on my own for the last few weeks or so. There's something that I've been avoiding talking about. When Danian left, he said he would come back. But he never did. He basically left me for dead out there in the woods. I didn't really say anything here, but I was so angry at him. I couldn't believe I trusted him. But when I turned my phone back on, I got a flood of texts from him. Danian apparently tried to call TSV, but the calls never came through. He apologized for the way he acted and how he left him there, that he was scared and didn't know what to do. Because of what he knew, he got in trouble with some people who threatened to kill him if he didn't tell them what they wanted to know. He wishes for the way things were, the simpler times, before they moved away from each other and leaves a set of coordinates for TSV to meet him, if both of them are still alive. There's something else that I haven't told you all, TSV says. I neglected to mention it because I had no idea what I saw or heard, but now I have actual proof. About a month ago I saw one of the ships flying nearby and, after a loud noise, it suddenly exploded and then came crashing down. Honestly at the time I thought I was hallucinating or something, but now I'm fairly certain I wasn't. That's definitely not one of the ships. That's a jet. TSV sets off for the coordinates, seemingly emboldened by the knowledge that people are fighting back, but goes silent for over a month. When he returns, he writes about seeing Danyan in a dream, which may have been a memory, and mentions how he feels he may already be too late. He hasn't heard from him. Something feels off, but he can't place why. That's when his followers tell him he's been gone for a month. TSV believes it's only been a week. I don't remember how I got here, he writes, not noticing an extra letter in his statement. A few days pass and Tucker comes online, trying to get through to him. Something is keeping me here, he says. I try to leave, but I just come right back, back. I don't know what to do. Through circumstances that we aren't shown, TSV manages to break the spell, though he does provide a very strange photo, showing a light in the sky in what looks like another ship. Was he being held by an automated alien craft? There's no time to theorize. TSV continues on to Danian's coordinates, a long journey that takes him through the city. He manages to scavenge for supplies and gets lucky, but narrowly escapes an ambush of possessed people who break his arm as he gets into the car. The instructions of his followers help him treat the injury, and through the changing of winter into spring, TSV journeys on, headed to the coordinates. And when he arrives, there's nothing. He waits, but receives no contact. What's more, his broken arm isn't any better. My veins surrounding the broken part are swelling and getting darker, I guess. TSV leaves the scene and then shares a photo. This car has been following me for the past 10 minutes. Danian sends a message. Pull over. We just want to talk. This isn't Danian, but he is safe. Please pull over and let us talk to you. I was expecting a bunch of looters. Of course, they still had firearms, but they were very civilized. There was a man and a woman among the group. They seemed to be the ones in charge. They were using Danian to get to me, against his will. That's why he discouraged me from tweeting, and why he left. They said they want my help, but why not contact me directly? I asked about Danian, and they just kept repeating, he's safe, he's safe. They want my account. They consider it valuable for reasons they won't tell me. I said I'd consider if they told me why. They wouldn't budge, said that if the info is leaked in the wrong way it will, and I quote, ruin our chances of survival. The conflict must have ended somewhat peacefully, allowing TSV to leave with his phone and the account access. Days later, the group holding Danian asks how much of the contaminated water TSV has consumed. They explain that it works like mercury or lead poisoning, but it's not just a neurological agent. There is another mystery at play here, even as TSV deals with the knowledge that he's been poisoned. On May 12th, he tweeted, Another photo showed up in the Remember album, showing a scene in winter from the time of sunlight. The Remember album is a curiosity that appeared on December 1st, 2018, in the midst of TSV's mental spiral at the water's edge. These were taken four years ago. For some reason, they were in an album called Remember. Originally, there were three photos, but a new one appeared on January 21st, 2019, and now a fifth has materialized. But how is this possible? 
TSV doesn't even remember taking at least one of them. We have an alien invasion occurring that's blotted out the sun, and the arrival of new photos from a world in which the sun persists. This is definitely of importance, but in the absence of other evidence, we're unable to determine any meaning. Let's keep these photos in mind for later. TSV falls silence from May of 2019 until November. When he returns, it's with a major downturn in his mindset. I'm not strong enough. I can't help them. I can't save them. I can't save anyone. Not even myself. I've been thinking for a long time. Would it even make a difference if I hadn't gone after Danyan? Do the choices I make even fucking matter? Why even use this account? What is the point in tweeting to the void when there's nobody left? It is so, so quiet now. But the irony is, my head isn't quiet. It's like all of the weight of the world got crammed into my brain. They won't stop whispering in my head. I think the accident with my arm, I think it opened up something inside me. All my veins look like this. I feel like I have a fever. But at least I'm still alive, right? He's made it home, and everything is just as he left it. The survivors he met are gone. The group holding Danyan haven't spoken. TSV spirals into despair. Updates become sporadic, and in March of 2020, he says, Danyan is here. He's in the room with me. Look. He's standing behind me. I can see him in the mirror. Why can't you see? Listen, 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 listen. The madness soon breaks, if only for a moment, and then he relapses as Tucker speaks. As contamination continues, it's not just repeating words and phrases, you start repeating past trauma, too. TSV calms down long enough to share screenshots from a group chat with other survivor Twitter accounts, which reveals a deeper horror. One of them, Nat, the lost son, has been taken over by the same group who captured Danian, and their purpose is revealed. Their belief is that accounts like TSV are beacons for the world, encouraging reckless actions in others, and they must stop all resistance efforts against the invaders, because if they keep fighting, humanity may go extinct. They've even sabotaged military organizing efforts for the sake of their pursuit. TSV powers down in the wake of the revelations. For six months, he stays silent, and then speaks on October 24th, 2020. I think I'm beginning to understand. I can't just survive. I have to live. I just killed one of those things. We have a chance to fight against them. You can't hold Danian's life over me anymore. This is what happened to my old phone. Text conversations, contact list, all gone. My only hope now is to reach out on Twitter to Tucker and find out where he went and track down the people who took Nat. From this point, everyone goes radio silent. TSV, Tucker, and the people, operating through Nat's account, Lost Son. The quiet lasts until October 29th of 2021, when this tweet appears. Nat's in safe hands. See the code to ensure protection. Extra letters are provided for the code in question, and Tucker picks up on the communication, quickly solving it. Remove TSV immediately. Tucker reaches out to TSV, and on November 12th, TSV responded, It's time. I have to step out of my silence. I know there's a lot of questions, and I'll try my best to explain everything I know. TSV explains several elements of the story so far, catching up those who are just tuning in or need their memory refreshed. His thread does come with some new information for us. The military fought these invaders for a while, but for some reason a global ceasefire was called. We still don't know where the troops or their governments went. They all disappeared. I never thought about it before, but it's suspicious that somehow the internet is still online, and electricity is still accessible in most cities and hubs. And yet the governments, news networks, any public officials from before the sun vanished are all gone. I think all of this is connected. We the people are the same group that called the ceasefire. The same group that took our friends. If that's true, they're powerful. What do they want to use this account for? Why are they taking our allies away? Are my friends still even alive? I wanted to stop using this account because I've been afraid that it puts me and my friends in more danger. But now these we the people put a hit out on me. Being quiet doesn't work, so it's time to be vocal. I'm gonna find my friends, dead or alive. 
even if it starts a war. I think I accidentally discovered a secret weapon. I was able to destroy one of the strobes. I'm not sure how or why, but something is different about me now. We the people should know that I'm not going to be fucked with. I'm going to try to find Tucker first, since he went after Nat, but I don't think he even knows where to look. But we will find a way. We will get Nat back, and maybe even Danyan too. On November 20th, TSV quote retweets one of his notes about having a surreal dream involving the campsite with Danyan, which included Tucker and Nat, or their bodies anyway. He says he's been having strange dreams like this for a while now, revisiting old places and lost memories. He wishes he still had the photo album from his dead phone, which is an important point for us to acknowledge. The Remember album is now gone. If TSV ends up getting more pictures on his new device, it will mean the rules of reality as we understand them in this situation can all be put into question. On December 27th, TSV said, Tucker finally reached out. He's in a city with signal that's not too far from me, only a couple hours. This is the first in a long time that I'll be going back out there. Not sure how ready I am for this. About my arm. It was excruciating for a long time, but the dark water made it sort of... go away? Not sure how else to describe it, but my skin feels paper thin and my veins are dark and bulging. I've gotten used to it now. And with that, we're back on the chase with TSV, who is no longer just a scared survivor. He's equipped with a means to fight and has a new purpose. Where the story will go from here, and what mysteries will be revealed, is anyone's guess. Aiden Elliott, the creator of The Sun Vanished, released a proof of concept short film on YouTube a while ago under the channel, They See Motion Studios. The majority of the short explores another story from the apocalyptic event, but if you're patient, you'll find ties to the original story. Beyond that, the only way to continue the journey is through following the account, and if you're not one to check Twitter every few hours, tapping the notify button. There are several points of brilliance about this unvanished, some of which I remarked on in my original video years ago. The power to engage with the audience through polls, allowing them agency in the direction of the tale, is such a powerful touch. It can be thrilling to follow any narrative in this overall format, but providing interaction in this way, making each audience member somewhat responsible in the course of events, creates impact that the tale otherwise wouldn't have. Another touch to applaud is the use of other in-universe accounts, like Tucker's and Nat's, giving us unique perspectives on events and allowing for situations like the people abducting allies. While not explicitly necessary for following along, those who want more can read the timelines for these characters, filling them in on their journeys, and the glimpses of events throughout the world sent to them in messages by others. The Sun Vanished has had its active points and its hiatuses as TSV has gone through highs and lows, but through it all, I believe the narrative has stayed strong, unveiling more of the world cast into darkness and developing the tale beyond what others telling the narrative could drive it into. This very well could have ended up devolving into a story spinning its wheels against countless encounters with strobe enemies and hostile survivors, but instead, it evolved to include new enemies, higher stakes, glimpses of new mysteries, and character development. I have a feeling that it's more than right to return for this next arc. It promises a return to form with a vengeance, and is not some re-energized continuation of a tale that already met an ending, but a true part two embarking on the path towards its climax. I've enjoyed the journey of the Sun Vanished so far, I'm glad for its return, and I'm excited for what it will reveal to us in the coming months. That's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks to Aiden Elliott for making The Sun Vanished, thanks to you for watching, and thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, who support the work I do on Nightmind and the Nightmind Index for new and emerging unfiction projects. You can join the Patreon for as little as $2 a month, which also gets your name in the credits at the end of all major videos. It really, truly does make a difference in my life and my ability to do consistent work, and I appreciate it immensely. And if you can't do that, but you are an avid viewer and you're not subscribed yet, why not subscribe? This way, all new Nightmind journeys will appear right in your subscription feed, and you won't have to search them up. And believe me, you'll want to stick around for the next few. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight.